Hello, hello guys, welcome to day 27 of 30 days of Nime. Although this is being filmed on day 28, but I'm going to be posting another video for day 28 very shortly. Today we're going to be looking at how we can detect and treat outliers in Nime. Over here you want to search for outlier, and you see the numeric outliers node, then you can pull that over. Now just for an example case, I'm going to be applying this on the distance column. So let's say I want to handle outliers in the distance column. Once you indicate the column you want this to apply to, you can set your interquartile range here. It defaults to 1.5. If you increase this number, less of your data can be considered as outliers. You can make your calculation use heuristics. This is memory friendly. So if you have a large data set, you might be able to get away with this. But if you have a small data set, this is not advisable to use this option because you could have in inaccurate results because it makes things on estimations versus looking at the full data. If you have a smaller data set, you might, it's probably best to go with the full data estimate. If you check this box, then your domain will be updated. Your domain basically contains information of the possible values in that column. If you remove some outliers, you might want this to be updated. And if you do, then you can check, click on this box over here. Here you have the options to treat your outliers. So you can apply this to all outliers, outliers below the lower bound and outliers above the lower bound. Are you familiar with the box and whisker plot, which you used to um, detect outliers? This relates to that really. I'm going to leave it to apply to all outliers. Here you have your treatment option. You can decide to replace the outlier values, remove the outlier rows or remove the non outlier rows. In my case, I'm going to remove the outlier rows. Over here in the group settings, you can apply your outlier detection within the appropriate group. So it might be relevant for our case to apply this at the origin airport code level. So if a flight is taken unusually long from that airport, then that's a better approach because, you know, these flights are coming in from different places. So naturally, we're going to have different distances. So it might make some sense to contain this within the appropriate origin point. And of course, here you have the flow variables to make your workflow dynamic and more easily automated. And finally, you have the memory policy to allow you to be more efficient so let us go ahead and run this and see if we actually have outliers and if we ha have gotten them removed. That ran super, super quickly. So we started out with 51,959 rows of data and we are left with 49,891 rows of data. So it looks like we lost about... We lost about 2,000 rows of data um, for being outliers. And then over here, we can see the treated table, which is, you know, what, what we see in the summary. And over here, we can look at the number of outliers for each group. So here's the name of the outlier column. And here we have the grouping by, which is our origin airport code. And then we have the count of members and we have the outlier count. So let's see which airports had the highest outliers. So it looks like um, MIA. Should have probably used the full name, but it looks like the airports with the code MIA had the most number of outliers. And this was the lower bound for distance, and this was the upper bound for distance. Now, I think MIA is probably Miami International Airport, now that I think about it. Yes, I'm pretty sure it is. So we have all that, that information for you to get a better understanding of, of what is happening in your data sets regards to outliers. All right, you guys, that's day 27. I will see you shortly in day 28.